In order to make the video is easier to be understood by the audience, newcomers. The presentation of this video is not like the real situation but in an exaggerated one so please consider it is just a reference carefully before you watch. It is one engine crankshaft. It is driven by the energy produced from the fuel. It is a fan. Already installed at the restricted position. The crankshaft and the fan are rotated synchronously. It is a ramp plate. Installed at the innermost position. The crankshaft and the fan rotate together but the ramp plate does not rotate. It is a boss. When it is installed, the fan blade will move back a little bit. Although the fan is in contact with the boss, the boss does not rotate when the fan rotates. At this stage, only the crankshaft and the fan rotate. It is a variator, even after variator is installed. Only the crankshaft and fan did rotate. Finally, even after the V-belt is installed, still only the crankshaft and fan did rotate. Strange? Why is this? Because the lock nut does not exist. It's a lock nut, after it is locked. A pressing force, pressure, is produced to compress all the components and make the rotating crankshaft will drive all related components rotate together. The strength of locking torque must meet the specifications from various manufacturers, too high or too low as a problem. In the previous explanation, it already said the sequence of installation about every component is not the real case. The purpose of this explanation is just to tell everyone that transmission of each component has its order. This chapter will have further discussion in detail. First of all, the crankshaft makes the fan rotate. And then there will be two routes for power transfer. Route 1. Fan. Boss. Ramp plate. Variator. V belt. Fan. Back to origin point. Route 2. Fan. V belt. Variator. Ramp plate. Boss. Fan. Back to origin point. The two routes are carried out at the same time. And both will return to the original point but the sequence is reversed. In some vehicles the V-belts are in contact with the boss even it's at idle state. The power transfer process will be a bit different from the above mentioned. But after acceleration, the V-belt position will move outwards, which will be the same. When the boss is too short, the position of fan will move inward, and the V-belt position will be forced to move outward. Which makes the low speed gear ratio value become smaller. When the crankshaft rotates, it will be founded that the boss is still inactive. Other parts are operating normally, and the vehicle can be ridden normally. But this situation will not last very long, and problems will soon occur. Since the variator and the boss do not rotate synchronously, it means that the two parts are rubbing against each other. The working temperature is higher than normal state due to friction heat. In severe cases, the variator and the boss may jam. In addition, the initial acceleration of vehicle becomes lower, and the V-belt life will be shorter. Do you remember the power transfer process? Route 1 Fan 
boss ramp plate variator v belt fan back to origin point in route 1 the fan is unable to drive the boss to rotate route 2 fan v belt variator ramp plate boss fan back to origin point in route 2 the ramp plate is unable to drive the boss to rotate discussion from the conclusion after the boss is installed the height of boss needs to exceed the yellow line which means that the boss can directly contact the fan at the same time this is also the extreme inner point where the fan is installed inside install the ramp plate variator boss etc all three parts and push them to the bottom position and the length of the boss is larger than the yellow line then it is correct take a section of the boss and take a look about the inside portion that will be more clearer install the fan and lock the lock nut and the fan is in contact with the boss now changing to a shorter boss even if the fan has been installed more inside the fans still do not touch the boss in other words even if the crankshaft drives the fan to rotate the fan still unable to make the boss to rotate the most economical method is by installing the gasket to fill the gap until it exceeds the yellow line position now the entire height has exceeded the yellow line position the crankshaft can be rotated to drive all parts to rotate after fans installation must be beyond the yellow line position take a section of the fan and take a look about the inside portion that will be more clearer at the same time, the yellow line is the limit point at which the lock nut can be able to be locked. It can be seen that this is no problem now. Changing to a thinner fan. Lower than the yellow line boundary now. At this state, the lock nut, locked, still is not in contact with the fan. This is a problem that represents the locking force, axial force, and pressing force not effective on all parts. The crankshaft drives the fan, but all other parts are found to be in a stationary state. It is easier to find its abnormalities because the vehicle may have problems even at the start. The most economical way is by installing spacers, it make up to the thickness needed. Then the axial force of the locked lock nut can be heavily pressured on the fan, even on all parts. 